Hi everyone, my name is uh, Faisal Kamal. I'm a gastroenterology and hepatology fellow at University of Tennessee Health Science Center in Memphis, Tennessee. First, on behalf of my co-authors, I would like to thank Gastrointestinal Endoscopy, GIE, for the opportunity to discuss our recent article entitled Role of Routine Secular Endoscopy in Patients with Acute Peptic Ulcer Bleeding, Meta-Analysis of Randomized Controlled Trials. As you all know that peptic ulcer disease is the most common cause of acute upper GI bleeding and is associated with substantial morbidity and mortality. Endoscopic treatment is effective in achieving initial hemostasis, although the rebleeding can occur in up to 13 to 17 percent of the patients. Cyclic endoscopy is sometimes performed in patients who present with acute upper GI bleeding due to peptic ulcer disease who had hemostasis on the initial endoscopy. This approach not only increases the overall costs of the care, but also predisposes the patients to the small risk of complications from the additional procedure and anesthesia or sedation. Several randomized controlled trials have compared planned or routine cyclic endoscopy with no routine cyclic endoscopy in patients with peptic ulcer bleeding and have reported conflicting results. The recommendations from an international consensus group, American College of Gastroenterology, and European Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy do not recommend routine cyclic endoscopy in patients with non-variceal upper GI bleeding. Instead, they recommend its use only for the patients who have re-bleeding. In the UK, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence guidelines recommend considering the repeat endoscopy with treatment as appropriate for all patients at high risk of re-bleeding, particularly if there is doubt about whether adequate hemostasis was achieved at the initial endoscopy. A meta-analysis published in 2012 found that routine cyclic endoscopy was associated with a significant reduction in re-bleeding and need for surgery. However, since then, several newer studies have been published. So we decided to conduct an updated systematic review and meta-analysis to further evaluate this issue with the inclusion of the newly available evidence. For this meta-analysis, our outcomes of interest were re-bleeding, mortality, and need for surgery, and mean number of units of blood transfused. We performed a subgroup analysis, including only those studies in which endoscopy combination treatment was used in conjunction with intravenous PPI twice daily. We performed this subgroup analysis because this is the most commonly used approach in these patients with acute upper GI bleeding due to peptic ulcer disease. We also performed a sensitivity analysis by excluding two studies in which the single endoscopy group and the routine cyclic endoscopy group received different regimens of intravenous PPI. In the final analysis, we included nine studies with 40, 1,452 patients. Of these, 726 patients underwent routine cyclic endoscopy, and 726 patients did not undergo routine or planned cyclic endoscopy. We found no significant difference in rates of re-bleeding between the two groups. The risk ratio was 0.79 with 95% confidence interval of 0.51 to 1.23. We also found no significant difference in mortality between the two groups. The pooled risk ratio was 0.69 with 95% confidence interval of 0.33 to 1.45. We found no significant difference in the need for surgery or in the mean number of uh, units of blood transfused between the two groups. Our results remain robust in several predetermined sense subgroup and sensitivity analysis. We found low heterogeneity in, uh, in all analyses except the analysis of re-bleeding where there was moderate heterogeneity. Quality of evidence ranged from low to moderate based upon great framework for different outcomes. In conclusion, we found that a single endoscopy with complete endoscopic hemostasis it is not inferior to cyclic endoscopy in, redu in reducing the risk of re-bleeding, mortality, or need for surgery. Based on our analysis, we recommend that cyclic endoscopy should be reserved for patients with evidence of re-bleeding 
and those in whom there is a concern about the adequacy of hemostasis obtained by the initial endoscopy. I once again thank GI for giving me the opportunity to present our work. I also thank the audience for watching this video. I hope you will find our article interesting and useful.